All right. In that case, let us play Dungeons and Dragons. All right, so when last we met, you all had encountered quite a few undead in this side of the castle. Uh, there were, there was one zombie, for lack of a more, uh, I guess, accurate way to put it, but there was a zombie in this cell here, which was dressed in that same sort of monk uh, or monastery robe attire, similar to what you have seen in the past. We've talked about that, but that same yellow cloth covering that I think Elisar found in this main chamber here, a shred of. Also similar to the undead that were wandering around in this old tavern room. Uh, I think that's where they were. I always forget if they were in the storeroom or the tavern room, but one of those two rooms there were undead there as well. And then you found in this old storage room, there were uh, four, looks like probably treasure hunters, adventurers. Uh, they had adventuring gear on. Been here for quite some time. You could tell just from in the term in terms of zombie uh, decomposition, they, these guys were pretty well on their way. But um, uh oh, so they. I just got to note that J and J vaccine has been on, put on pause. Ooh, that's not good. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyways, uh, just late breaking. We'll see. Somebody fact check. <laughs> so we're just talking about it. The so this room here, full of uh, like those four adventurers, battled it out. I don't think anybody was really scuffed or hurt. I think the big deal though was that Gimner was exhausted, and Elisar and Gimner sort of moved their way through the back to the dungeon, back to that well. Gimner, you had a, a soak uh, at least an hour. I think. Gimner, uh, Elisar, you were sort of standing guard for Gimner. Yep. And then Taz and Harlan, y'all just sort of chilling in this storage room for right now. Is that right? Is that where we yeah. left off? Because um, Harlan was casting Identify on that axe. Mm. That's right. So that was, took 11 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, Harlan, and that you were able to kind of determine that that, was a, that axe had magical properties. It gives you a plus, plus one. Uh, to hit and plus one in your damage. Um, and it's super sharp, super light as well. So not that, that you need that, but it's it's got a really interesting feel to it, given the size. Uh, that is done. Let's, Gimner, you're now sort of, now when you soak for an hour, does that bring you all the way back up or does that just bring you back up one level? Only one level. So, so the exhaustion caused from his water dependency is gone, but okay. the exhaustion from that critical fail, he'll need like um, another long rest for that one. Okay, so you- Short rest fixed the water dependency, but okay. he needs a long rest for the other one. So you are at this point still, you still will have disadvantage on ability checks only, not on saving throws. Just, I remember last week I got a little bit over yeah, my skis on that one, but yeah, so ability checks only. So you're still you're still okay with that. Yep. You feel better, obviously. You feel hydrated, but still, you know, just sort of whew, a little extra weight on your shoulders there. Uh, that's not normally there for you. And then, Elisar, you were kind of a how shall we put this delicately? A bit of a mess. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna wash myself after Gibbs had soaked himself for a while. <laughs> Uh, you are, you can certainly, yeah. The good news is this is this this well has kind of a, it's not sitting water, right? So it's there's a little bit of a spring that kind of flows through, and and so you're able to sort of clean yourself, get a nice chilly bath, and it's quite cold. This is very cold water, deep under the, deep kind of deep into the earth here. Well, the earth, earth being little e. <laughs> not, not Biggie. <laughs> Deep in Faroon. Uh, so uh, you, you're kind of cleaned off. Yep. You both come out of this. You heading back to the storage room? Yeah. Okay. 
So the, the band is all together. You're back in the storage room. And just to remind you, in this room, a lot of these crates were kind of busted up, uh, kind of busted open that you can see just visually. Now you can't see everything just by looking. You might have to go touch some things. So, so who wants to search the, uh, the ruins? I, uh, I can check out some of the crates. Can you make an investigation check for me? Sure thing. Uh, a five. Yeah, you find a bunch of just busted up crates. <laughs> That's about These it. These are broken crates? Most of them are either open and empty or broken. There are some crates that are like stacked along the, you know, the west wall on top of each other, sort of up and high. There's that, but you don't really notice anything other than just a bunch of kind of wooden crates, mostly open, broken or empty. Does anyone else want to do some investigation? Yeah, Elsa, I'll try to search a little bit. Uh, okay, make an investigation check. Investigation, 14. You noticed on the west wall, sort of a, a pattern that looks a little different than the rest of the crates, sort of a, a stacking of them that looks, looks like it might be out of place. Can I mess around with it, see if there's any kind of uh, a lever or hidden something there? Yeah, you can start shoveling things around if you want to. Does anybody else want to get over there and help? Harlan? I'm still just exploring these empty boxes. Okay. Is there still dead bodies on the ground where we fought before? There are. There are four uh, zombie corpses on the ground. Uh, okay. Four. It's some fraction of four because many of them are their parts. <laughs> it's like, okay. I think Taz cut a couple in Harlan's half. Harlan's going to go to the one. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're breaking up on my end a little bit. Yeah, a little bit for me too. I'm breaking up. Uh oh. How about that? It's better. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting an error. How about now? All right, I'm gonna see if I can reduce my bandwidth. Okay. You're okay. Um, I think you're good now. Yeah. Am I good? I yeah. So. Yeah, I was getting an internet is unstable warning, which is rare. How about that? Can you all hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, I'll go back to sharing. Okay, Harlan, you were asking a really good question about something that I lost you as well. You were asking about the zombies. Yeah, so Harlan is going to go to the one that looks, I guess, most intact. Okay. And he's going to cast Animate Dead on it. Ooh. So now this zombie is going to turn into my zombie for the next 24 hours. He's like my servant, almost. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. What can you do with, what, can you interact? Can you, like, speak with him? I don't think it can tell me, like, any information like I knew before. Uh -huh. But like if I tell him to like guard an area or open a door, he can do that or like attack or something. So do you need that zombie's stat block then if, you're, if, if like you did go into battle or whatever? It's actually yes. just any, just it's the zombie stat block from the monster yeah. manual. So you, you can probably grab that one um, pretty, pretty readily. There's nothing special about these guys. That's really cool. Yeah, so describe what happens when you animate this thing. So, it's like missing like part of its left, you know, like its left arm is sort of just hanging off of its shoulder. It's still barely attached by like a piece of zombie flesh just dangling. Uh -huh. So Harlan goes up to him and kind yeah. of picks up one of those like hand and breaks off a finger. <laughs> and then he gets some like some dust and he kind yeah. of puts it together and he puts like the finger kind of back on. Yeah. And then the zombie slowly just like kind of stands up. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, so it just sort of lifts kind of Michael Jackson thriller style, you know, and just as it lifts, it goes, you hear this, da-da-da. 
<laughs> no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so you kind of got this. So what do you guys? What are y'all doing when you see this? I'm just like, mm, that's weird. <laughs> Did you give him a heads up, Harlan, that you're getting ready to do that? You just like animated nope, the zombie. I just did it. <laughs> nice. Elastar, what about you? Where where is he compared to me? I think let's you know, you guys are kind of milling around, so you are over here kind of messing with this stack, LSR. Yeah. And I, I get the sense that the, one of the zombies that was most intact had kind of fallen down close to this bottom of these steps. So I'm guessing that Harlan, you're kind of over here messing with this zombie when it stands up. Yeah. And it's my turn, huh? Well, we're, I'm just curious what you what your reaction is. Uh, to... I am holding my action. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell the group he's are friendly. I have no idea what the heck is going on, so I'm just... Make a persuasion check, Harlan, please. And everyone okay. else, uh, let's see, what is the... Okay, help me, what's the opposite of persuasion? Um, Insight? Yeah, insight. Yeah, yeah. So everybody else make in, roll insights, and we'll see who's got the greater roles, who's convinced, and who's not. Nineteen. Ooh. Sixteen. Ooh. Fifteen. Oh. <laughs> well, Taz and LSR are doubting Thomas's right now, Harlan. So just so you know, they're looking sideways at your your new zombie pal. Okay, I, I reassure you, this is under my control. How about Gimner? What are you doing at this moment? Um, <laughs> Gimner got a 10. He see he sees um Okay. You know what's happening. Like, okay, he's standing next to him, he's doing something to it, and this thing animates. So Gimner still, you know, on edge, but sees that is, you know, so, something's going on. So so how high is the ceiling? It is in this room, you're back in the main dungeon. Uh area and these are fairly tall ceilings i want to say 20 20 feet okay. maybe 25 so gimner can't can't make make it all to the ceiling so he's just going to launch himself 15 feet up onto the wall okay just, just trying to get out of, out of reach of this thing okay so harlan gimner just he sees what you're doing and then he pounces out of the way now he is somewhat less skeptical with that 10 you've done it you he believes you, but he's still something innately has got him a little freaked out about this zombie. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you're sort of standing close to him. Everybody can kind of see that Harlan is not attacking this thing. And in fact, maybe there's something you can do to convince them, Harlan, that he's one of your guys. All right. Uh, Harlan is gonna kind of tell the zombie to do some jumping jacks. <laughs> No, zombie's gonna do a couple of jumping jacks. <laughs> tell him to stop. He's gonna stop. Uh, I'll tell him to spin around in a circle. He's gonna spin around in a circle. I'm like, see, he's under my control. It's perfectly fine. So, so number one, take an inspiration point for that creative <laughs> zombie uh, dance that you you gotta gotta do for everybody. Uh, and I think, without having to make another roll, I think you guys. Actually, I think Taz and Elisar, you're maybe more convinced now. Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. I was pretty pretty convinced to begin with. Okay. I was just like, well, eh, that seems fine. Okay. Yeah. Elisar, you could have had your back to all this anyways. That's probably, you were probably a little taken off guard. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right, so while Harlan now has this zombie pal, and uh, we'll call him Bernie, for lack of a better name. I don't know. Bernie, we can Bernie. get Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> so, so we'll call him Bernie. And, and so we got LSR on this side, kind of just uh, fishing around with a stack of crates. Uh, does anybody else want to help LSR sort of investigate what's going on with those crates? I know Taz, you rolled a five. Sure, Gibner will help out. Okay, you make an investigation roll, please. And you're at disadvantage, I think, right? I am. Okay. I gotta wait for my, my it's not an iPad, it's a slow pad. <laughs> I, 
right. First one was a 21, but let's see, what's the second? Ooh. Okay, second one is a crazy eight. Crazy eight, yeah. You're, you're just seeing kind of the boxes in the way. Um, how about you, Harlan? Now that you've got a zombie, do you want to go see if you can see if anything else is going on over here? Yeah, I'll go over there and do an investigation check. Okay. Ooh, a 23. Ooh, something about having a, a zombie pal has, has really focused your eyes. Uh, as you, as LSR sort of is moving the crates around, you notice um, kind of in the wall, a seam. Okay. I'm gonna tell my zombie to go over there and try to kind of put his hands in it and see if he can pull it or anything. Okay. Your zombie kind of meanders over, gets his kind of what's left of his fingers sort of wedged in the seam and begins to sort of shift it. Um, make a strength check for your zombie. Okay. A 19. Yeah. It just gets really good zombie finger purchase on this scene and just starts to shove basically a pivoting slab of stone which reveals a secret passageway. I don't know, say, see, the zombie is good. <laughs> let, me move, let me show you guys the secret passageway real quick after I move this out of the way. All right, I'll start sharing again. Okay. Yeah, so this slab moves out of the way and reveals this secret passageway. It's about 20 feet long. You can see that it opens up. Are you going to check that out? Yeah. You guys going to wander down this passageway? Yeah. Yeah, sounds cool. All right. Yeah. The kind of the passageway itself is, mm, let's see, I think it's only about, well, no, it's about, it's less than, it's about five feet wide. So it's more narrow than what you're used to. Uh, here inside the, the regular part of the dungeon. Um, the, the, the passageway opens, it's about five feet off the floor as well. So as it pivots, it's sort of like a, basically kind of a hole in the wall, but it's, you know, kind of a five foot wide hole in the wall. So you guys kind of had hop up if you're, uh, or kind of climb into it really, and then start shimmying down the passageway. Um, it's, it's, tall enough where Gimner can stand, but most kind of like the tunnel leading out for the rest of you, you probably kind of have to hunch over to, to get through it. And then you see that it opens up into this chamber. And the yeah. chamber in front of you. Hmm. Gimner, what do you think? You want to go first? I'll be behind you. Sure. We got a marching order. Gimner. Oh, sorry. Well, how about zombie? Is zombie first or? Uh... Uh, yeah, zombie may want to go first. Okay, right, I'll yeah, send zombie first. Good meat shield. <laughs> so zombie. Bernie! <laughs> Bernie goes first. <laughs> then Gimner. Wait, Harlan, how close do you have to be to, to your to Bernie before you can Let me check. Sixty feet of you. Okay, so you're fine where you're at then. So we got we got the zombie Gimner, LSR, Taz and Harlan. Is that right? Yeah, that, or yep. I could bring up the rear okay. as like a safety precaution. Okay, somebody's trying to follow you guys. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. So zombie kind of just wanders in the room and just kind of plops into this chamber. 
followed by Gimner. And then Gimner, kind of what you see as you, as you approach the opening is a room with white stone with many niches kind of in the stone surrounding it. So as you kind of see here, in and out, all the way around this room. You see a stairway to your north that's choked, that's like a passageway choked with rubble, kind of as you get in. And you can't quite see from where you're at the back of the room, other than that it has these two niches and it looks like another niche over here. All right, um, Gibner's going to um, enter the room stealthily. Okay. And what he'll do is he'll kind of hug that northern wall and investigate the first niche. Okay. Yeah, as you kind of investigate this this niche in the in the room, it's really just sort of a, a design feature of the room itself. It doesn't seem to be a remnant of anything that might have held something. Uh, just kind of the way the room's designed. Okay. All right. He'll he'll advance towards the. Uh towards the rubble, checking out e each of those uh, niches on the way. Okay. Yeah, I'll be right behind him. All right, I'll do this. Oh, this helps if I share first. Okay. So you guys are all in the room now. You see the stairwell kind of leading up and just kind of rubble piled to the top there. And on the far side of the room, you find another doorway. This door um, is, uh, looks like it's made of heavy stone. You guys want to try to open it? Yeah, Gimner is going to investigate the door. Like okay. He's taking his dagger, tracing it around the edges of the door, uh, checking out the wall next to it. You notice that the seam on this door looks fairly clean. In other words, there are no cobwebs. <clears throat> there's no visible dust. In fact, the whole room seems a little bit more clean than you would expect a room that may have been sort of abandoned and forgotten. Mm -hmm. Is it a, does it have hinges and a doorknob or does it appear to be a- It, it does, it has, it has large sort of metal hinges and a big sort of latch. <clears throat> All right, I'll, I'll check it to see if it's locked. As you sort of, push the latch, it is locked. All right. Now I'll pull out my, my trusty thieves tools. Okay. And since I'm a, a, a little tired, they may not be so trusty. <laughs> okay. Let's see, I got a 26 on the first roll, but the second uh, roll. Oh, that's right, yeah. Can he Wait. keep his hands steady? Oh, I got a net 20. <laughs> Palms are sweaty, mom spaghetti. You unlock the door like it's netty. Netty meaning, I don't know what that means. But yeah, you got it. <laughs> it would be the lower of the two, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Click. You definitely hear the, the mechanism unlock and uh, the door's still shut, but it's certainly now unlocked. Okay. So based on the hinges, does it appear like it's going to swing inward or outward? It feels like it's going to swing sort of towards you, the way the hinges are. So okay. I'm not sharing anything yet. Let me reshare here. Well, so I'm going to wait. I'll just do, we'll do theater. Gimner's going to put up his second. finger to the group to wait one second. Okay. Um, he's going to cast that little psychic net thing that he does. Okay. And so we can all talk telepathically. And now that we're level five, I can have the whole party 
Well, the oh, whole nice. party mine, mine is um, Bernie. Right, right, right. right. So the four of us can can all be talking, you know, telepathically. Okay. Um, with each other, so we can be quiet. So I'll tell him, hey, how about we open the door and let Bernie walk through, and we'll just sort of stand out of the way. That way, if somebody's there, they'll see Bernie and not us, and then we can rush in and surprise them. I'm in. Sounds good. Awesome. Sounds like a good plan. That, Gibner will be careful to open the door while staying behind the door out of sight. Bernie shuffles in, and you can't really see what's in the room through Bernie. I mean, you do see that it is a room that has opened up behind the door as it opens. He sort of walks into the room. Harlan, what is he doing as he walks in? Just walking. Yeah, so he just he just meanders into the room. And do you have him just kind of stand in the middle of the room, almost like as a bait? Yeah, just like kind of walk in, stand there. Yeah. Uh, he's just pausing. Nothing seems to be happening. Right. I'll tell him to go a bit further. Yeah, he goes a bit further, and as he goes a bit further, more of the room becomes visible uh, as you're kind of looking into it. On the far side of the room, Gimner, you're sort of close to it, uh, closer to it. You see a in the kind of the northwest corner on the west wall, a large chest. And then as the zombie goes, he just kind of walks to the far wall. It's 20 feet across. He's made it to the far wall. He's just kind of staring at the wall, Blair Witch style. Yeah, I'll tell him to come back. Yeah, he turns around. Does he moonwalk back or does he turn around and walk back? Turns around and walks back. So many Michael Jackson. I can't get thriller out of my head now because, okay, so it was Mark, I blame you for the dropping the 80s stuff on me. So I can't get the 80s stuff out of my head right now. So, yeah, so he comes walking back to you. Um, and you're back, he's back at the door entrance. You've kind of noticed that there's a chest in this room, a very large, kind of ornate chest, in fact. What do you guys want to do? Zombies come, gone in, come back out. He's keeping most of his parts together. I say we go in, what do you think? Let's go for it. Fortune favors the bold. Uh, let's check it out. <laughs> All right, now I can start sharing. Again. All right, yeah, as you walk in, this is the zombie kind of walked all the way here and came back as What's the marching order? Ah. I was in the, the back. Okay. So same marching order. So we got Zombie, Gimner, LSR, Harlan, and Taz. Yeah. Okay. You all kind of walk in. As you walk in immediately, you notice to your left a table sitting, and on that table is sitting a decanter. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, it's a, a small crystal decanter. And that's it. You got a chest and a table with a decanter on it. Gender's gonna move towards the table and investigate the decanter without touching. Okay. Yeah, as you move towards the table and investigate the decanter, you see it has a liquid in it. Labeled in a kind of a placard, if you will, or sort of a brass punched out placard is a, a, a label which says potions of healing. LSR says potions of healing. I'm saying this telepathically. Okay. Yeah. Um, does it does look it legit? Look, I mean, it looks exactly like potions of healing. I will take clear, it. or it's got the bright red, you know, color, the smell, everything. All right, um, there's one. Looks like about four doses worth in this decanter. I think we should each take it. A, 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 uh, I think. <laughs> I, I want one, so <laughs> right. So we can divide it by four. You can divide it by four. Okay, so we'll each take one. Does that make sense? Sure. 
So it, it's in a decanter. Oh. Um, you would have to kind of keep it, I think, as in one, one, yeah, one sort of, con, you know, whatever. Yeah. Container. Who wants to hold on, wants to, hold on and to it? Partition it out when it comes time, if if you need them. Give well, me. Why don't you powder. hold on to it, Elisar? Let me do. So as you grab the decanter, uh -oh. I need everybody to roll initiative. No. <laughs> 23 uh, 25 all right 25 for taz 23 was that lsr you got it 13 for harlan and the zombie will go right after me okay harlan and zombie right 11 for ginder all right, so Heartland, Zombie, Gimner. As you move the decanter, on the far wall, sort of standing uh, against the wall, a, a swirl of dust begins to manifest. And as it begins to kind of swirl and swoop, from the ground up, feet, then legs, then a waist and torso, a shield, a sword growing from the ground up into a hand holding it, till finally a head emerges of this hideous ghost-like creature that appears before you and basically uh, just out of nowhere is standing there. The kind Harlan, of the language that it, what's that? Harlan, that's a neat trick. We did it again. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> it's It speaks in common and says, you shall go no further. And uh, with that, Taz, you have a turn. Um, I guess I will rage. Okay. Yes, I have rage. Um, and then I will run up on it. Okay. And swing my new great axe plus one. Go for it. Go for it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go reckless. Well, hold on. How many hit points do I have? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go reckless. Okay. Too crazy. Okay, my first attack is a twenty-four to hit. That hits. And my second attack is a twenty to hit. Okay, both of those hit. All right. So I'm going to do. That's eleven plus two. Thirteen points of slashing damage. Okay. And then three points of radiant damage. Okay. And then, ooh, uh, 18 points of slashing damage. Man, boom, all right. As you cut into this thing with your your great ax, uh, you, you can, it's weird. It's like you don't hear any crunching, you don't see any blood, but like the, the spectral nature of its essence sort of opens up and then sort of closes slightly around the wound that you left. Um, it does act like it hurt, like it sort of, you know, winces and, and, and sort of recoils a bit, but, you know, it doesn't have any sort of sound that you would normally hear when you strike some physical object. Uh, Elsar, you're up. Um, gonna go with the good old Eldritch Blast. Go for it. Fourteen. Uh, fourteen misses. Ah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Ooh, hang on a second. I gotta do something different real quick. 
Yeah. You use the battle axe, right, Taz? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Scratch that, what I said. It does not clo close back up. <laughs> oh, yeah, because the battle axe is magic. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Magic so, weapon. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, in fact, it hisses when you hit it. It just shrieks and hisses. Uh, Harlan, you're up. Yeah, Harlan's going to cast Firebolt on this creature. Okay. Ooh, that's a natural one. Oh, oh no! <laughs> retrieve the table, sir. <laughs> All right. Give me a D one hundred. Okay. Go for it, Harlan. Do your best. Let's see here. Uh, that'll be a nine. Okay. You have slipped in the heat of combat. Make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. A failure results in being prone until you are able to stand back up. Okay, I That's failed that, so I'm prone now. So you, you like firebolt and just, whoo, bam, you're on your back. And so you can stand back up in your next action, right? Or right. your next movement. Your zombie's up, though. Um, I didn't tell it command because I guess it slipped and kind of knocked a breath out of me. So okay. it's just going to stay there. Okay. Uh, Gimner. You see Gimner Harlan just bite it. <laughs> grip his lucky Umber Hulk mandible. Okay. And, and give it a big, like, he's trying to imitate Taz still. Okay. It, okay, <laughs> you did this. It hissed. Let me try that with this. on the roll. Okay, uh, 17. You hit! Your first hit with the mandible. <laughs> nice. He looks at the mandible at, at, at all, looks at Taz and back at the mandible. <laughs> and it just kind of gives the biggest grin. Nice. Taz just gives like the, the cool guy nod. <laughs> 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 Do one of these. Okay, so it does um, nine mandible damage. Okay. I don't know if that piercing or slashing or, or bludgeoning. I think I think that was piercing. I'd have to look and see. Let me. I can do it real quick. Actually, I'm curious uh, for the bite. It'll take me one second. And I can tell you what it was. Not that it matters terribly, but it's better to know if it's a stick or a slice. So the attack. From the mandible, from their bite, does slashing. So it is cutting. It is a cutting action. So uh, yeah. So you, how many hit points was that? Sorry. A nine total. Nine okay. slashed. All right. Um, and it is now its turn. Everyone's sort of in the room. Uh, um, you've hit it from a melee weapon. Gimner, and really you hit it, it from a melee weapon, Taz. You really hit it. I'm gonna think that it's it's going to, it makes, it's got a multi-attack as well. I think it's just, you heard it, Taz. It's gonna go after you. Um, advantage. Yeah, with advantage. Okay, so let me get a couple of these guys. One swipe, I mean, this sword that just sort of grew out of the ground out of dust and, and ether, now it's gonna swipe at you with it. Uh, so with one of them, that will be a 19. 19 hits. The other one, well, the 19 hits, and that one hits, that's a 24. So both of them hit. And with that, that is 11, 16 points of force damage is what this, this weapon does. I do not reduce that, so that was bad. <laughs> yeah, it just sort of swings through you. And, you know, you, you've been cut before. You expect the feeling of a blade, but instead it's, it's the smash feeling that it, it, it gives you when it hits you. Uh, it is your turn, however. And when it says that, actually, as it slices you, it... It says, uh, 
the Lady of Law says you st shall stop here. And he smashes you with it. I just grunt past the pain of the, the slash and I am okay. going to recklessly attack again. Okay. My first roll is going to be uh, 19 to hit. Boom. Yet again. Okay, so that's going to be uh, eight points of slashing damage. With your battle axe, your magical battle axe, yes. right? Okay. Yep. And six points of holy damage, radiant damage. Okay. And then my second attack. Uh, is going to be uh, 19, or sorry, a 20 to hit. That hits. And then it's going to be 17 points of slashing damage. Good grief. And as you hit it with the, the second swipe of the great axe, its face just contorts in anguish. And then you see it's sort of the dust of it start to just kind of wisp away its face the features of its face dissolve and it's just a blank face the the sword that it had also just begins to dissolve as it's and dissolving i'm just going to be like we're all just dust in the wind <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm like Oprah tonight. You get an inspiration point. <laughs> so you get one for that one. So like you get you get a car, you get a car. I think mean, Gimmer's the only one. And did I give you one already for the for the mandible? You may have. I don't remember. It's, if I didn't, then you should have taken one because that was the refashioning of the mandible is worth one. So I think everybody now has one. I'll take it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, dust in the wind. It just sort of slides out of the way, leaving you in this room now with silence, with a uh, a trunk. You, did, I don't, I'm not sure, uh, LSR, if you're able to actually put away the uh, decanter yet. Okay. Um, maybe you did before the battle started, but um, if you didn't, you can now. All right, good enough. Um, cool. And there's a trunk on the far left side, and you just you you're hearing what it said in your in your brains. You you shall not pass. This is as far as you go. The Lady of Loss has placed me here to stop you from continuing. Who wants to open that? <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll I be behind if, someone who opens uh, it. I, I'm still raging, so I'm just going to rage kick open the chest. <laughs> you, you rage kick open the chest. Yeah. Uh, it, the, it flies open to reveal a boatload of coins. There's money in here. <laughs> there yeah. are, as you look in, who wants to look in the chest to see how much money is there in it? There is in there. The decanter, by the way, itself, without the potions of healing, are worth twenty-five gold pieces. Just the decanter. Okay. So, Patrick, if you get that in your inventory, twenty-five GP yep. for the decanter. Yep. Um. The chest, as you look in, is a sea of copper pieces, with a few silver pieces scattered in there. Gimner is going to try to count them, or like estimate. Yeah. yeah, you're really good at estimating. There are 790 copper pieces in this chest, 230 silver pieces. And as you, you know, as the creature was dissipating, kind of disappearing back into the wind, a necklace falls to the ground where it was standing, that it was wearing. Hmm. 
uh, Gim will take one of his um, pad pouches out and says, uh, I, I can hold these until we get back and we can split it all up. And then the necklace is there on the ground for whoever wants it. That seems fair. Money is good. <laughs> <laughs> you guess, like, it's like finding a whole bunch of pennies. I'm like, yay! <laughs> it's like you. Um, <laughs> Would you could load up on the pennies? Can I investigate the necklace? Anything interesting? Yeah. Anything interesting about it? Sure. Other than the fact that this spectral creature was wearing it, uh, okay. now that, yeah, as you notice, it, and it, it's the only kind of material thing that is left behind from it. It drops to the ground. You notice that it, there's like a stone uh, inset and a pendant inside the necklace. I put on the necklace. Okay, yeah, you, you, can, you can put on the necklace, nothing happens. But as you do, you you get a closer look at the stone. Okay. And the stone looks like this. Can you guys see the PowerPoint or the slideshow? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, I'll keep it on, I guess. Yeah, you can get you got this necklace around your your neck with that stone in in kind of in the pendant. Um, anybody else want to make an investigation check for anything else in the room? Yeah, there's only that one door, right? That you can see. Um, Gibner will investigate the uh, I guess the far wall. Yeah, make an investigation check. Got a natural one, so I won't even bother rolling again. <laughs> you found a wall on the far side. You definitely discovered the wall. Harlan Zombie did a good job of finding the same wall that you found. <laughs> Man, it dipped in. Can you believe that? <laughs> Do you guys want to, does anybody else want to detect anything else in this room? I'll just go up to the wall with this new magic battle axe. Okay. And I'm just be like, how magic is this? And I'll just swing it as hard as I can into the wall. Swing it as hard as you can while making an, an investigation check. Mm-hmm. And add the plus one <laughs> to it. Okay. So that's going to be uh, a 14. With the plus one? Yeah. No, just conk. Cuts right into the wall, pulls it out. This wall is, is pristine. Made of stone. Yeah, definitely feels like stone. stone. Wall. <laughs> LSR Harlan. Um, I'll try a little bit more of a finesse approach and just try to see if there's anything that looks like this, anything out of the ordinary, searching for like uh, any kind of anomalies in the wall or okay. anything like that. Make an investigation check. Oh, and then I do two. <laughs> Harlan, how about you? <laughs> I'm just going to tell my zombie to run straight into the wall as hard as it can. <laughs> awesome. And then have, roll, roll an investigation with advantage since you've got the zombie doing the, the hard work. What do you think? Okay. Platform seven, three, and three ninths or whatever from like Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, highest is going to be a 13. <laughs> you were like 29 when you guys are in battle. You can't find anything in this place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can't seem to figure out what's going on in here, but the words of this creature, you can't go any further, are bothering all of you. What is he guarding? You know, what do you mean you can't go any further? So Taz, when you smashed into the wall with your battle axe, nothing moved, but it did seem to shake on the far side, kind of closer to the chest. 
some strange dust that was unfamiliar. You know, it fell out from a place it didn't seem like it should be falling out from. This dust is unnatural. <laughs> it's Give not the dust in the wind. <laughs> check, check this dust. All right. I Get pick up some of the dust later. and I, I taste it. Yeah. This dust does not taste like natural dust. <laughs> it is definitely some strange dust. <laughs> it is newer dust from this old place. Gimner's going to light a candle, get really close to that dusty corner. Okay. Um, he's going to pull out his little hammer and a, and a piton. Okay. Set the That's candle it. down. He's going to start like ding, ding, ding. seeing if he can't pry out any more dust, discover any grooves, any... You've got advantage with thieves tools, right? I'm... I'm Proficient. Ex expertise with it. Expertise, okay. So... Can you do a thieves tools check? Is that going to be a disadvantage because of your? Uh... I can, okay. um, and just... it is disadvantage. Let's see here. Here comes the first one. All right, first one's a twenty-six. Let's roll it again. Got some sweat on my brow. My hands are feeling a little shaky. Trying to keep them steady, and the dice say eighteen. Oh, you tick 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 click. You hit a seam Ooh. in the door, in, in the wall. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> in the wall door? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you hit a seam. You hit with the whole door. Yeah, exactly. It, it also has a bit of a pivot to it, similar to the door that you found when you were in the old storage room with the, with the where one of now Harlan's buddies was formerly hanging out. So it's yeah, another one of these swivel slabs. Yeah, I think there's something here, guys. I'll keep, I'll keep working it until yeah. I can expose it fully and you get it open. You kind of work your way around and you see a full stone slab now exposed. It kind of has a bit of a tilt to it or hinge, if you will, kind of on a, on a pivot. All right, the last one was locked, if I recall. Well, I think the last one, uh, Bernie got his fingers in there and was able to sort of tilt it. Huh? Hey, Bernie, Gibner's going to stand back. He just stares at you. Is all this going to go and try to open it <laughs> kind of the same way? So, you, so Harlan, you're going to tell Bernie to go give it a, the old heave-ho? Yep. So, as soon, so as, Gimner, as soon as Harlan says it, he kind of hops up, and goes right over. <laughs> <laughs> so starts to get his fingers in there. Do another strength check for your zombie. Okay. Ooh, that's gonna be a four. Yeah, his his fingers go crack and break off. I'll tell him to come back. I'm like, <laughs> zombie's probably not a good idea. His little fingers fall to the ground. He comes walking back. He doesn't seem sad about it. He just waves at you and go like this. <laughs> Taz, you want to give this a heave? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can give it a good old college try. Good old strength check. Tazbian. Uh, 16? Yeah, you're able to just tilt this thing open. And let me stop sharing. Let's see what we got. Ooh, hot diggity dog. <laughs> so you open this door, this swivel slab, if you will to reveal a 10 foot by 30 foot, or no, 20 foot by 30 foot chamber. Uh, in this chamber, as you look in Taz, you see two small chests, three display stands, three large clay urns, uh, and a bench. And on that bench, is sitting a 
humanoid creature with its hands chained to the walls and its head sort of looking to the ground. Hello. When you say hello, it lifts its head up and says, Greetings. I thought you would never come. Well, we're here. Are you the Lady the Lost? <laughs> As you begin to kind of all enter in, you notice that this uh, humanoid is also wearing the monk's garb that you've seen on several of the zombies that you've fought in here. As you ask that question, oh, heavens no. I serve the Lady of the Moon. Who are you? Ah, well. You serve Saloon? The great goddess of the night, Saloon. Yes. My name is Elzebar Nephrim. And I have been a captor here for many days. But I am a a loyal servant of the Lady of the Moon. And I've been chained here for longer than I can remember. They've tried to kill me. They just can't seem to to make good work of it, for some strange reason, I guess I am blessed. He's still sitting there with his hands chained. Would one of you be so kind as to unlock me? Uh, I'm not hungry, and I'm not even thirsty, but my arms are a little tired. They've been stuck like this for, uh, like I said, more days than I know. I've lost all track of time. There is no light, there is no daylight, there is no way to know, but it's been, I'm certain, weeks, if not longer. All right, so we still have our telepathic net up. Mm -hmm. I don't know, this seems a little odd to me. Yeah, doesn't it? Um, Gimner's gonna look from a distance, look into his eyes to see if they look normal or not natural. Make a perception check. Perception. All right. Uh, got a nine. Hmm. As far as you can tell, these are the eyes of a tired old half elf. Uh, please, if if anyone has the key for these locks, that would be much appreciated. I've got I've got work to do, and I fear that my my traveling companions may be a, in grave danger if they're even alive still. Oh well, we cleared out this whole place, and there, there was, there was, won't nobody alive in here. Did you see anyone dressed like me? Perhaps. You notice that he's got a big chunk of cloth ripped out of the bottom of his robe as he's sitting on this bench. I'm gonna whisper to my zombie to like, don't go into the room. Okay. Like, kind of stay hidden, almost. Okay. Your zombie sort of backs out slowly. Elisar, you have that chunk of cloth, by the way. A chunk of cloth that looks very similar to the robe that he's wearing. Yeah, I'm going to hide it, obviously. Okay. And then just look gonna... action and see what, what, the rest of the, what the rest of the group wanted to, wants to do here. Okay. Kimber's thinking some of these people, things we've come across have had tattoos. He's going to try to look and see if there's any tattoos, like on the neck or exposed skin areas. Yeah, make another perception check. Hmm. 
Let's see here. I got a little bit of that dust in my eye. I'm not seeing so clearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not able to see kind of anything apparent. I mean, his, other than the rip in his kind of robes, his attire, that yellowish robe color, he's fairly well dressed still. I mean, he looks fairly well preserved. Well, Does the Lady of the Lost mean anything to you? Oh, the Lady of Loss. Yes, well, she is the mortal enemy, is she not? She is the queen of the night, the evil that wakes and walks. She is the you curse. Shar. She is Shar. She is my, my lady's sister. She is the darkness who we must defeat. I received a prophecy in my, in my temple far to the east and was told that I must travel west to save basically all of goodness. And so my group and I set out many months ago on this quest, not knowing where we would end. We were captured by orcs and brought here. There was a a white, red-eyed shaman who tried to torture me, but his weapons were useless against me, so they've chained me in this back room where I've, where I've maintained with, with only the grace of the great Selyun, apparently to keep me alive all this time. So you must be from Nazara, the sis sister temple to the east. That is where and I'm if, from. If I see a ring on his finger. You see a ring? Hmm. It's got an owl picture on it that you can see. Do uh, um, do we want to help, help get this guy out? <laughs> yeah, I think you maybe we'll let him free. What do y'all think? He's still holding his his chains are there. Give her a walk up and try to pick the lock on the chain. You notice that the the mechanism on these wrist locks that have him chained to this wall are very archaic in nature. Um, Uh-oh. Oh no, we lost, we lost Daniel. I didn't notice that his internet died on him. Should we give him a second and see if we can dial yeah. back in? Yeah. Now, it's never good when the whole internet fails. <laughs> so I'm curious. <laughs> it's a dark <laughs> omen. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if he's gonna come back or Oh, let's see. That'll be a, be a cliffhanger. I know, man. That will be a good cliffhanger, actually. Why don't we do, why don't we just do that? It's, I'm looking at 804. You are investigating this, this man, and, and just for reference, his name is Elzebar Nephrahim. He's a half elf. He's dressed in all of the same garb that you've seen before, similar to what you saw in the Temple of Selyun. Uh, gotcha. He is chained to the wall with his, his arm irons, if you will, are archaic in nature. The locking mechanism looks very strange. It does have a keyhole. These locking mechanisms, they have a keyhole uh, for, for unlocking them. However, he is, uh, it looks like he's okay. He's healthy. There's lots of things in this room. You found him. And why don't we say with that, we can return next week with this continuing conversation with, with Elzebar, the monk from the Temple to the East, the Temple of Selyun, East cool. Side. In the house. In the house. And- uh, Great adventure. All right, and with that, I'll stop sharing. Uh, the zombie oh, has backed out of the room. What's that? Elisar still has those keys on. Oh, I, I know. One that looks like a uh, skeleton key, right? Yeah. Funky looking key. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Does it work? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see next week. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. Come back. Same bat time, same bat station. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, That's guys. Great, guys. Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right, well, yeah, I'm glad you all enjoyed it. We'll talk to you guys next week. 
sorry that Daniel lost out on that last one, but he'll have to watch the online video to get through. He'll have to fast forward all the way to the end to get to the, yeah. to find out what actually happened in his own adventure. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, he looks like he's coming back in. Here, I'll admit him real quick. And so Taz takes, oh wait, he's joining the audio. Yeah. As soon as he joins. So Taz took, what, 47 points of slashing damage? <laughs> Uh, 53 plus. 53 right? points? Oh, he's back. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Taz, we're wrapping up. We'll, we've got the cliffhanger. Elzebar's chained with his, with his arm irons in. It's an archaic lock. There's a keyhole in there. We're have... putting some, some people have some keys. Bella says it's time to wrap up. She's telling me to. So we're going to call it a night, man. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you guys next Wednesday, right? Everybody's good for next Wednesday? Back to regular Wednesday. Thing. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday's awesome. good. All right. Great. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Bye, Connor. We'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Next all right. week. Next week. All right. Bye, all. Bye.